Running a business can be quite a challenge for anyone. For someone to pick up their bags and start a business in a foreign country is an entirely different challenge. Meet the ambitious expats who chose the city of Breda as the place to kickstart their business. Welcome to Foreign Affairs. Right in the centre of Breda, we find an authentic burrito bar. This bar is the result of years of planning and hard work from a Mexican man named Antonio. Uh, my name is Marco Antonio Villanueva. I'm 34 years old and I've lived here in the Netherlands already for mm, five years. Antonio originally comes from Mexico City, where he certainly enjoyed life before starting this adventure. Yeah, my life in Mexico was really, really great. I used to have actually really nice jobs there as well. I did work in touristic areas. I moved to Cancun and Playa del Carmen. I, I did horseback riding. I did uh, zip lining. Uh, instructor for catamaran, uh, windsurfing, all those kind of things. Yeah, in order to come to the Netherlands, I have to go into a integration process, which is called uh, Inburgerings. Yeah, you have to learn basically language, uh, learn about society, the culture, basically to integrate you to the system before you arrive. And for that, yeah. It's a process where you have to make exams and everything, so you really have to pass it, otherwise you're not allowed to come to the Netherlands. The integration process really helped Antonio familiarize himself with Dutch culture upon arrival. You come and live with a, a family, a Dutch family, and integrate yourself there. And to get to know how society and people works here, also with the language, although it's not so difficult, I think, language, but it's also not easier. It's just basically to integrate yourself before you come here, so then you don't get that, what people call like the cultural shock. Breda was the first city Antonio settled down in, and he immediately grew fond of it. Yeah, I think it's really great, great uh, city. Personally, I love Breda since the first time I came here. It has this nice atmosphere and coziness, what the people here call all the time, like Hesele. Yeah, when I came to Breda, obviously I was having some savings. Yeah, eventually I started to run out of that money. So then begin to work in what was my business plan to achieve that or begin with it. I have to get some job before to get some money back again. He decided the next step would be to start work in a logistics company, which was all part of his business plan. The part of uh, being in the logistic company was because they have a big amount of workers, like almost from 2000 to 3000. And as a Mexican, let's say that I was having some skills to make friends with uh, everybody. Yeah, eventually I could get to know everybody and then I could offer my product there. So it was kind of a part of a, how to begin my company. With these connections made, he could start developing his product already. Uh, I begin doing the, just giving burritos away to the people that I knew friends and I just wanted to see the reactions. So I noticed that they were actually reacting very good because I just made the food like according to how Dutch people eat. And uh, I keep burritos away and then afterwards, then when I get into the logistic company, I have to ask if I could just stand with a food truck. And then I got a really old rusty food truck and white and everything, no colors, no logos, no nothing. Uh, so then I asked to the company if they were allowed me to sell every Friday. So yeah, they did because the people that I already knew there, uh, yeah, they were all exciting about the Mexican food and all this kind of thing. So yeah, every Friday I begin selling uh, burritos. The people begin to really enjoy the, the food and like it a lot until the point that I, it was not necessary for me to work there anymore. So then is where I start to notice that, yeah, it was a good idea, a good plan. And from there, it begins to roll. Now what he needed to do was find the right customers for his food truck. In Breda, I don't know if in the whole Netherlands, but at least in Breda, there is not so many locations where you can stand with a food truck or places where to sell food. So uh, the people, Obviously, I wanted to offer my product here at the city at the beginning, but since it was not easy, I have really to think how to reach more people. There is also people in all the industrial areas that they don't have the time to come to the city 
for a lunch or to take a break or else. So then I start to to be in all the industrial areas until I get probably even way much more customers than just being standing in somewhere, you know, so then I just driving around. It wasn't long before he found other ways to reach the people of Breda with his product. Because of the business plan that I had already, part of it, it was to be focused only, obviously, in the people from Breda. You know, if, if I live in Breda, obviously, the people that I needed it was people from Breda. So I actually didn't participate so much in um, these events, like for food truck festivals. Yeah, I actually focus very much in local uh, festivals, like uh, Beer Garden, uh, Breda Bars, uh, Hart van Kineke, uh, people also from uh, Beer 5 thing. So they were organizing parties of uh, festivals. Yeah, I actually make my network from there and I really got to know a lot of people from Breda and a lot of people get to know my product as well. Well, after, after that, uh, the local events and everything, I actually get an industrial kitchen because yeah, more people were really asking for the product, like often like, where can, can we buy it or stuff like that. So it was an industrial kitchen. So where we began with the Thais Besort or service home uh, with delivery food and using couple of companies there and yeah from there it was really a lot of people that we reached people that I didn't even knew. The reception to Antonio's burritos was always positive in his eyes it was a new approach to fast food. Yeah it was easy to to sell my product because it is very healthy food people could see definitely what is inside of every burrito. For me, it was just very important that the people now could have a taste of the fast food, but in a healthy way. With so many people asking for the product, the next step was to get the location that he has now. It was important for the shop to be close to the city center. Actually, the first two days were kind of tough days because obviously I just opened a new place and yeah, people were passing by like looking like, what is this, you know? And uh, yeah, it was, kind of tough because yeah, people, although people know it via delivery, uh, but not really as a restaurant or a place where they can come and eat it. Now his customers have more ways than ever to purchase his product. I actually have people that orders with us via Facebook, WhatsApp, SMS, uh, now all well, the services for uh, delivery, home delivery. Um, yeah, now the people, now we plus the people that come here to eat in the restaurant. And actually it's, it's very nice to see because I have people that come all the way from uh, Brussels just to eat burritos all the way here. So that's pretty cool because I see them at least like twice a month or something like that. We asked Antonio about some of the biggest differences he noticed between the Netherlands and Mexico. First thing that I, when I came to the Netherlands it was obviously since I was in the plane, and we were about to land, I didn't see any city. You know, it was just like, where is the city? So just green everywhere. That was funny. But yeah, uh, talking about the people, I can't tell that yeah, people are a little bit more reserved yeah, comparing to Mexican people or Lat Latin American people. Yeah, the people were a little bit more close in somehow. With his business in full swing, Antonio noticed another opportunity to develop and sell different products. When I develop or make these recipes for the burritos, um, I make actually for every every recipe has like its own sauce. People actually, I knew that the sauce was nice because yeah, it has a good taste, but eventually the people were really asking for the sauce a lot. So sometimes people order for two, three burritos, but they order like 10, 12 sauces apart. He decided to start a company with a friend to mass produce his sauces. With his small production line, he is able to make up to 2,000 bottles of sauce per hour. And yeah, the plan originally is to, yeah, to distribute or sell all the sauces in small places here, like snack bars or even restaurants or whatever. But the real plan of this is, yeah, I would like to put those sauces in Albert and Jumbo. Yeah, I think that is, my real point to go in those bigger shops. He also has very specific goals in mind for his shop. I definitely want to franchise. I mean, the part of my business plan is to franchise first uh, Benelux. 
So I really want to see all my shops everywhere in the yeah, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg at the beginning. But uh, right now I have people actually that is interesting uh, to buy the concept in other countries, but I really need to set the business in the Netherlands first to understand really good this because obviously I'm, I'm new in all this. But the real goal is uh, I would like to go international, definitely, at least in the whole Europe. So that's what I want. With ambitions set high, it will be interesting to see how much Antonio's business will grow and develop in the near future. Next time on Foreign Affairs, we'll visit a Scottish woman who used her talent for languages to start running her own daycare centre with an international focus.